first things first, um, I'm just out of the shower, so excuse this. Um, it is the second week of Book Hoplathon and the Magical Readathon. And this week, my focus is going to be mostly on reading Under the Whispering Door. Um, I'm also going to try and listen to A Spark of Light by Joe Dupacol, I think. And Miles Morales' Shockwaves by Justin A. Reynolds. Under the Whispering Door is my first time reading anything by TJ Klune. So I'm pretty excited, but also a little bit nervous because he's so well loved. Um, and then I think I like Jodie Picoult. I always get Jodie Picoult and Jojo Moyes confused, which I don't know why, but for some reason that's what my brain does. Um, but a Spark of Light sounds really intriguing. And then Shockwaves is just like a 150 page graphic novel. And I have really enjoyed Justin A. Reynolds' work in the past. And I'm really interested to try something a little bit different from him. I feel like I've been really bad at updating this vlog this week. Um, but I have been reading. So I'm about 5% away from the end of under the whispering door and like I'm on the epilogue so I kind of like what am I trying to say so at this point they're just like wrapping up the final things and I've got like I basically know how the whole story goes and I actually really enjoyed it when I started off reading the book I didn't like it one bit and I was actually really scared because I'd pre-ordered the Illumicrate edition of Under the Whispering Door and also House in the Cerulean Sea so I'm going oh dear have I made a massive mistake but then I don't know what changed um but I started liking it a lot more and I don't know if it's actually very clever writing where you kind of are identifying with um, Wallace, the, the like cantankerous middle-aged man who dies. Um, so you're not really liking these characters because he doesn't like them. And then as he warms to them, you also warm to them. Like, possibly that's what happened. So at the start, I'm, you know, I'm hating the characters Wallace hates. And then suddenly, I'm not hating them so much. But I would say, like, because I started off disliking it, um, I can't, I can't give it a five star this time round. But I suspect that whenever I reread it in the future, it's going to be a five star read. Because knowing how I feel now about the book will probably impact how I feel about the beginning. And there's so many really beautiful quotes in the book. Um, but obviously, like, I don't want to spoil it for you because I really do recommend you read it um let me just pop a bookmark in here just bringing up my notebook okay so oh dear so this is my kindle obviously and like these are all the portions that i've highlighted like clearly i've really enjoyed it So that's been an absolute joy and you know in maybe half an hour I I don't really know how long it's going to be going to take for me to finish it but I will have officially read my first TJ Clune and I'm definitely a convert. His writing is gorgeous and 
we need more books for queer characters. Um, I haven't started Miles Morales Shockwaves yet, but considering I'm like 5% away from finishing Under the Whispering Door, I do anticipate starting and finishing that today. And then the other book that I plan to read this week was in fact an audio book and it was A Spark of Light by Jodie Picoult and I'm just having a, yeah I'd say a good time like it's not an excellent exceptional time but it's a pretty good time so it's first things first it's narrated by Barney Turpin who is one of my favourite audiobook narrators in fact I enjoy her narration so much that she's almost like an auto buy for, for me like if I see an audiobook narrated by her there's a fair chance I'm going to want to read it. Um, so yeah, A Spark of Light, um, the blurb was kind of deliberately vague but basically it follows a hostage situation in an abortion clinic. Like think along the lines of Planned Parenthood because like they do like gynecological and birth control stuff as well as performing abortions. Um, so it's a very pro-choice book, but it also has a lot of interesting insight into the other side of the coin. And that is not like, not for one moment, like coming across as being pro-life but it's sort of giving a little bit of a hint into some of the thinking behind pro-life it's it's so hard to describe but then you've got these really interesting characters like um the doctor i i think his backstory is really really interesting um, and I mean basically all of the hostages um, do have really interesting backstories. I do think, um, and uh, I'm going to say sp potential spoiler warning here, so I'll pop um, an image of the cover art of this book on screen and when it goes down I'm not speaking spoilers anymore. So you're predominantly following um, the hostage negotiator. I can't remember the proper title, but you're following um, the police guy that's trying to like sort this out, um, whose daughter's one of the hostages, and you're also following like. The hostages and the guy that's held them hostage but you've also got this other person you've got a young girl I believe she's 17 who has been arrested um, for trying to have a medical abortion and um, and I, I suspect and I it hasn't been confirmed yet but I suspect that she is the um, the person that's holding everyone's hostage as daughter. And I think this is a case of small cast of characters. Because, like, why else are you following her? Like, apart from it gives further context to the story. But... Part of my theory is that the the guy that's holding these people hostage calls his daughter Lil and this character's name is Beth. So in my brain I'm going, her name's Elizabeth. Um, and I think, again, this is all theory. It hasn't been proven yet. But there's... Um, Part of the narrative is this guy going, oh, well, 
my daughter came here to try and get uh, to to get an abortion and like Beth's story is that she went to the clinic or like she tried to go to the clinic and they needed ID so she then like went down the dangerous route of ordering medications online so I think it's trying to misdirect because I'm wondering if he doesn't know that it wasn't the clinic that actually performed the abortion but I don't know and back to non-spoilery territory so what I will say is that it's very clever the way that this book is constructed you start right in the middle of the action like there's there's a gunman there, there's a man who's holding these people hostage in the center and then you start winding back so something very dramatic has happened and then for the next I don't know 10 hours of the book possibly longer you're going backwards in time seeing what these uh what the stories behind each of these hostages is which is really cool as well because you know there's this almost like a cliffhanger hanging over hanging over the edge of things um but you have to get through all the backstory to know what's going to happen and i presume that after you've done that and after reveals and whatnot you actually find out what happened to to the event of the start of the book so that's pretty cool but it also makes it a little bit difficult to keep straight in my mind like I think it's going back like reverse chronologically but there's times when I think because you're getting like further back so it's going back oh, I don't know yeah so you've got like the hours of the day going back chronologically but then when you're getting the backstory you're going back weeks and months in the past so it's a little bit difficult to keep track of the timeline and I don't know if that's an audiobook thing or if the physical edition would have like a clearer timeline and the other thing I also want to note and I know this book has an author's note at the end so it may be addressed at the end but this book assumes that all people who are pregnant and or seek an abortion are women so just to be aware that that is a thing throughout there's this assumption that in order to be pregnant or seeking an abortion you must be a woman um and yeah that's how i'm getting on i will probably do one more update when I finish by well when I finish all three of these books so this past week I set out to read three books I wanted to read Under the Whispering Door which would be my first time reading a TJ Klune I wanted to read Miles Morales Shockwaves and I wanted to listen to the audiobook of A Spark of Light. And I can happily say that I did manage to read all of those. Um, I think Miles Morales Shockwaves is probably the one that I was least impressed about. Like, it wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it just kind of was. I'm not sure if that's because I'm not particularly up to date with the Spider-Man universe or you know something else like it wasn't bad it just didn't feel very memorable and it definitely felt like a short story which I suppose is to be expected because it is, is only about 130 pages long but I feel like I've read 
like graphic novels, comics, that kind of thing of a similar length that had a bit more to them. But I think I also, it's also worth noting that I'm pretty sure it's a, a middle grade graphic novel. So that probably impacts what the story is going to be like. I did like the character of Miles Morales and I liked what they'd done with his iteration of Spider-Man. I just thought the actual plot of the story could have done with a little bit more substance. Um, and then with A Spark of Light, the theory I had about it was correct, but it still managed to provide me with a final twist that I did not see coming at all. And it's kind of sticking with me going, wow, that's quite a good thing. Um, and I think I mentioned last time as well how there's an assumption that all pregnant people are women. And that is like, it's never addressed in the book. And I'm, I don't know one way or another where Picard stands when it comes to her opinions on trans people. I just, like, I'm not going to assume that Picard is a turf. I just think that it's, an over, it's potentially an oversight. So the book could be a lot more inclusive. And, you know, by all means, do tell me if Picol is in fact a turf. But I'm not going to assume because of this oversight that she is. Just be aware that there is this assumption within the book that all people who are pregnant are women. Um, I did think the ending was a little bit sudden. So the story starts off. I think I said this last time, but you start off at the height of the action and then you go backwards in time to kind of slowly unravel everyone's secrets and backstories. Um, and then right at the end, you go back to the point you were. But I just felt like you started off with all this tension and you're waiting throughout the whole book to find out what happened with these characters and I just feel like you didn't get a satisfying resolution for what actually did happen. Um, another thing that I didn't appreciate was that there is a use of kill the gays in this book. It's, it's a strange one because you're going backwards. Um, the fact that the gay character is killed off doesn't mean that they're not present in the story but at least initially when you're introduced to your cast of characters um you're not initially told the full list of casualties but you are told about this one particular character so for a good chunk of the story the only dead character is the gay character which just I don't know it didn't sit quite right with me especially considering that this book is taking place in a reproductive health center so it it's a choice that the only character that is killed off or that you know has been killed off happens to be the only gay character I don't know it's, a, it's an odd one but I did really enjoy it um and obviously like trigger warnings for discussion of abortion um religion sexual assault that kind of thing um I do think it's probably going to be a four star for me and then, like, yeah. And Under the Whispering Door was absolutely fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I I loved just 
everywhere the story went and I definitely plan on reading more from TJ Clune. I know that he has quite an extensive back catalogue so I'm hoping he maybe has something spooky that I can pick up next month. That's the plan anyway. Um, and then just to add on at the end, um, so for the past like three or so weeks, I can't remember how long I've actually been reading it, but I've been reading Air of Fire and like I've been reading like 6% each day, but I just decided that I wanted to try, well, I got hooked in the story and I just, I couldn't stop reading one day. So I've actually finished that this week as well. Um, I do have issues with this book leading on from what happened in book two. Like obviously I'm not, I'm not going to go into details because spoilers. Um, but yeah, the issues that I had with book two continue into this book. But I also am in, intrigued by where the story goes next. And I also like that you've pretty much introduced to most of the characters now. It's a weird one that I think I only started reading the Throne of Glass series at the start of this year. But because I'm in all these, all these bookish spaces, I know the names of all these characters. So I started off with Assassin's Blade, which... I do not recommend anyone start off with Assassin's Blade. It's a terrible way to start off your journey reading Throne of Glass. So essentially I started with that book and then I read books one and two and obviously Air of Fire was book three. So this is my fourth Throne of Glass book and, and this is the first time I'm meeting these characters that like you don't you do hear a little bit about some of these other characters but the characters you mainly hear about in this series you're not introduced to until book three so i'm just glad that i finally gotten to meet them um i have quite amb ambitious plans for my next reading week so i can't imagine that i'm going to be reading Queen of Shadows. Now, I can't imagine that I'm going to be jumping straight into Queen of Shadows, but I am planning on probably reading it fairly soon. Like, I might just wait a week, get this ambitious reading week out of the way, and then read Queen of Shadows. But that was a pretty productive reading week, and I have no idea where I am with the prompts for Book Uplathon and the Magical Readathon. Um, I will try and let you know in next week's vlog where I'm actually up to with the readathon. But until next time, bye! There's a place.